Good afternoon, everybody. How are you feeling? Are you still awake? Oh, excellent. We like that. Okay, um, I'm going to be the curator for this session. My name is Christiane Weiler and I am from Copenhagen where I work with the digital trend. I have a radio show and I run a blog called Electronista. So that's just to get that out of the way. That's what I do. But I'm really looking forward to this session. We're going to be talking about the interest graph. And with me, I have two people who both run companies and they, uh, that work with the interest graph. And that will put them in this great position to give us inspiration and show us how they stand around this subject of the interest graph. But first, I think uh, we should uh, have a little look at how we connect on the internet. Does everybody know this guy? 80s uh, icon, he was very big in flash dance. Um, big, big hit movie in the 80s, if you remember, the ones of you that are not born in the 90s or later. Um, can anyone think of why I would want to bring up Kevin Bacon in relation to this? What do you say? Six degrees, six degrees yeah. Because, um, and you could also say, you said the six degrees of uh, Kevin Bacon, but you could also call it the Bacon Oracle. Uh, who has heard of the Bacon Oracle? Few, few people have. But let me tell you, because what happened is in 1994, Kevin Bacon gave an interview to Premier Magazine. And in this interview, he said that he had worked with everyone in Hollywood, or people they had worked with. So a couple of college students thought that was pretty funny, so they started mapping who Kevin Bacon had actually worked with and who they had worked with. And they came up with this number they called the, the Bacon number, and that's the amount of steps that's between Kevin Bacon and the people that he had worked with or not or they had worked with. So if you look at the slide, you can see that the famous Danish actor Mads Mikkelsen has a Bacon number of two, meaning that there are two steps between Mads Mikkelsen and Bacon. He had not worked with Bacon, but with someone that had, of course. And there's a maximum of six degrees, because that's how small the world is. So this might actually have been the first internet illustration of what we now call the social graph, how people are connected. And the social graph is a graph based on shared connections. And uh, in the beginning, it was firstly used uh, in relations to, uh, to relations around Facebook. But no, now it's more widely used in general to describe the social networking online. And um, that's friends, friends of friends. It's our family and friends of family, mostly people that we are somehow related to. And we like this social graph because we like our friends and we like to listen to what they have to say. Um, a shared picture or a link from a friend is more relevant to us than something shared from a stranger, right? Wrong. Or maybe sometimes wrong. Because we might have a passionate interest about South African wine, but we might that not share that with our chi childhood sweetheart. She might not understand exactly what we mean when we talk about passionately about wine. So when we connect with her on Facebook, she might not be the right one to talk to this about. We might be obsessed about the Californian tech scene, but our friendly neighbors might not think that's the greatest thing in the world, even though we know them really well. So how about all these interests that we have that we don't share with someone that we know, but we know a lot of other people that have the same interests? Well, that's where the interest graph then comes in because the interest graph is based on interests rather than on real social ties. So whatever you are interested in, whatever you're passionate about, um, it's, it's, it's different to the social graph from that because the social graph is very much based on who we know and who they know. So we might be really interested in, know a lot about, or very passionate about rock climbing or design of furniture or Star Wars. Um, and it is more interesting to share these interests with people who are passionate about the same thing, even if we don't know them really well. And um, how do we get connected to these people? How do we enter into the same networks? Well, the uh, fire hose of web content is big. And filters that help us find the stuff we need has become a necessity. We're looking for more and more services that are helping us find peers or navigate in this vast amount of niche data that we have on the internet. 
We like to find the right data. We like to find the right information in these areas that we are really interested in because that makes us smarter in the area we are interested in and it makes us look smarter when we reshare this information. So just a few examples in relation to the interest graph. The expression was again first used uh, a lot around Twitter, where we tend to connect with people who share the same interest rather than our friends who we more socialize with on Facebook. Then there is the big Pinterest that's been a big hit, especially in the beginning of this year, at least in Scandinavia, but also uh, overseas. And this is where we uh, pin up our interests and put them on boards like um, fashion or technology or babies or cats, whatever we're interested in. And here's an example of a brand, a company, that th this brand is using Pinterest to uh, create connections and relate to the, the people that share uh, an interest to what is their main theme, which is infants. Diapers.com, they, they share everything that's related to, to the babies. Another service in the same ballpark is uh, Wanaloo. This is where you can share products that you're interested in, but this also shows where you can actually buy these products, which is a bit different to Pinterest. Food spotting, of course, is where people who are passionate about foods meet each other and talk about this and share uh, tips. Then we have Get Glue, which is where we all go in to, to uh, say which movies we like and get badges on what TV shows we've watched. So that's the, the niche that we connect on around there. And then there is this new kid in town, Medium. Has uh, anyone in here heard about Medium yet? Yeah? It's uh, this new service uh, that's coming from, from Twitter co-founders, uh, F. Williams and uh, Biz Stone. And we don't know much about it yet because it hasn't been launched yet, but it looks like it's going to be along the interest graph and they're going to be focusing a lot about on um, the quality of the content. So that'll be interesting to see how that pans out. But I thought I'd just mention it because it's pretty new that it's out in the open, that it's at least coming. But one of the things that most of us, and I'm sure everyone in this room at one point have needed, is a great travel trip, travel tip. And uh, maybe you've tried, like me, to go on Facebook and write, I'm going to Paris, where should I eat and sleep and drink and party and whatever you want. But then again, you might get like your cousin that thinks you should go to a sports bar and have pints when you're really looking for a cocktail. And you might have someone that recommends a really fancy restaurant where you want the authentic French experience. But there is a service that focuses on the travel tips. It's called Ever Places, and from Ever Places, I would now be very happy to introduce Tina Tuesday and give her an applause.